you just stand on your feet quickly and just give your best welcome to our dear friend, Pastor Judy Shaw. While you're standing, we bless God for this opportunity to bring to you the word of the Lord. Open up your hearts, open up your minds, open up your spirit to receive all that God has for you. Offer no resistance to his word and your life will be forever changed in Jesus' name. You may take your seats. Always good to be back at home uh, with you here at Harvest Time with our dear friends, uh, Pastor, uh, and all of you that we know and some of you that we've known for a long time. So we bless you, we bless you, we bless you, and we say to you uh, the same thing that the uh, Apostle Peter said to the church, grace be multiplied, peace be multiplied unto you this day. I like addition, but I like multiplication better. <laughs> Amen. And I receive the word of the Lord, and I don't take the word of the Lord for granted. When he say multiplied, he means multiplied. Yeah. And I don't look for addition. I look for multiplying. So begin to look for multiplication. Amen. So grace, grace, grace be multiplied and peace to you and your families on today. We greet you from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where God lives. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I was growing up, my dad used to say, that's God's country. The Midwest is God's country. And uh, I really know since I live there now, it's God's country. <laughs> So the saints of God, they, where are you going? Where are you going? And I told them, oh, yeah, we know the church. We remember. And we, as a matter of fact, you're on our prayer list. We pray for you. And last year, especially when the beginning of this, we were added to our, our prayer list. And we were interceding for God's blessings and the reign of God to fall upon you. How many know you can't have rain unless you have clouds first? So, Pastor Glenn, one of the things also I gave a word this morning that the Lord said that this church would be key to your future. This church, this local house, very key to your future, to your family, your children, your business, to everything that you're connected to. Believe it or not, this church is key to that. And that is because it's been ordained for you to be here, and the treasures that's in this house belong to you. The, the, the ideas that open heaven, the things that come from the throne room belong to you. And God releases them in this house so that your gifts can be stirred up and that you can uh, begin to be empowered and imparted into so that you can live this place living a supernatural life. How about that? I'm for the supernatural people. <laughs> I like the natural, but I like the supernatural. We can do the natural. God's given us gifts and talents and abilities, and we can do the natural, but there is a, there is a work in the spirit. There's a work that we can't do that belongs to God, and it, God does the supernatural. So I always like to say, we do the natural, and God does the supernatural. We do the ordinary, and God does the extraordinary. We do the possible, but God does the That's the kind of God we serve today, and that's the God that I preach in Jesus' name, a God that is powerful, that keeps his word, that establishes his word in the church and in the earth today. Uh, what would happen if we didn't have the church? What would happen? What would, what would this world be like if there were not intercessors, if there were not praying people? I know for myself, I would not be standing here unless I had a praying mother and a grandmother. Anybody have a grand, praying grandmother? Yeah, it's it's, the, it's, the, it's the, the, the agent, the church is the agent in the earth. It's the satellite from, from heaven that God has put in the earth to do his work. And that's who we are. We're not just an organization of men and women that like to come to church to hear good preaching like you're going to hear this morning. Amen. <laughs> or, or hear good singing like you heard this morning and, uh, and just to have the wonderful fellowship of the saints of God. But, but, but the church of Jesus Christ is not just an organization, but it's an organism. But as the church is not a building, as the body of Christ is not a building, the body needs a building. My spirit needs a building. Amen? And so what God is doing um, in the earth, in the world, and I, I'm so happy when I come to Harvest Time because... I know that you have a pastor and a staff that walks in present truth that's relevant, that's not, you know, doing what God used to do, 
but doing what God is doing now, that's sensitive to the, the, the ear of God, to the voice of God. And I love coming here. I, I can see what you're doing, and not only on Facebook, but every now and then I get some literature, too, to, to know uh, what God is doing in this region through you. And as you have been appointed and ordained to be in this region and specifically in this local house, your presence means a lot, your sewing means a lot, but more than that, it's not all about you. It's for your children. It's for this community. Because harvest time is in this region, this is a greater region. I'm telling you, what would this place be? Like, come on, give yourself a hand and clap. I'm right about it. I'm right about it. I'm right about it. I, I, I don't even want to think about what would be happening in this world if it wasn't for people that were praying for, uh, for our nation, for our country, for, for the world, for what's happening in the world. I don't even want to think about it if we didn't have the presence of Jesus, if we didn't, if we didn't have the presence of God. If we didn't have an altar to come to today, if we didn't have a Bible to read today to, to know what's coming and to prepare us and to empower us and to give us the strength that we need, what would you do if you didn't have your faith? What would you do? Don't take it for granted. I'm going to read a scripture to you now that comes out of 2 Peter, um, the first chapter, beginning the first verse. I'm glad for the local church. I'm glad that God instituted the local church and especially uh, the uh, indwelling, not just the outpouring, but for us to have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Yes. And some of you may like the Holy Spirit better. So either, take your choice. It's all the same. The Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Um, Second Peter, this First chapter. Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith, like precious faith, you have today like precious faith. Your faith is precious. It's like those of old. There's no difference than uh, the faith that our biblical heroes had in the Old Testament, name them, call the roll, Abraham, Moses, Joshua, Esther, Miriam, everybody in the Old Testament had this same like precious faith that we have. Move on over to the New Testament, mighty giants, Paul, Peter, uh, Timothy, all of those that did something for God, for the kingdom of God, that walk the same journey that we're walking today. The Old Testament is gone. The New Testament is gone. But we're the Now Testament, and we're walking the same faith, understanding the word of the Lord, that he's the same God today <laughs> as he was yesterday and forever will be. So the faith did not minimize when the Old Testament closed its book. Our faith did not minimize when the New Testament in the book of Acts, uh, you know, close the actions of the apostle. But today, the Bible is letting us know that we have that same like precious faith. I'll go even further than that. It's the same faith that Jesus had. Hallelujah. Now that makes me happy right there. And so he says um, to us, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power, his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through, everybody say through, through the knowledge of him, through the knowledge of his word, who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these, you may be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. I'm going to go back to that, but just turn over to Galatians, the fourth chapter. And that's what Peter said about what we have. We have uh, not just Sunday morning church. We have not just the Bible to read. We have not just a fellowship of the saints, but we have been given a like precious faith. 
But what you going to do with your light, precious faith, people? Are you going to use it? Because within the faith is life. It's the life that we live. It's the power of God. I said this morning, I just, you know, cross swords with those that want to say that the church has lost its power. And the church is not as powerful as it used to be. I really beg to differ because it's not that the church has lost its power. The church can never lose its power. The church may not be using its power. And just in case you didn't know it, you're the church. You're the church. It's not the brick and the mortar. We need the brick and the mortar to live in. We need this earthen vessel, treasure in our trash, divinity in our dust. We need this to live in. We need a house. But the precious faith that we have is what he's given us as a gift to walk and to live in this present world. And so Peter says, value this precious faith. It will subdue nations. It will cause you to be an overcomer. It will give you strength in the midst of your storm. It will give you peace in the midst of sorrow. It's the same faith that was once delivered unto the saints, and you got it today. Use it. Take it. You don't have to pray for it. You already have it. He released it. He gave it to us to be able to live and be victorious and to triumph in every single situation that may confront us, in every situation of trial that may befall us. We got something. Yeah, your, your, your trials are going to come. Your, your trouble is going to come. Your, nobody is exempt from trials, from trouble, from tribulations, from hardship. Nobody is exempt. And also, nobody is exempt from this precious, this like precious faith if you need it and if you want it. Hallelujah. Yeah, the Bible says also in Galatians, where sin abound, grace much more abound. I'm not worried about the sin. Just make sure you got the grace on your life. Amen. Just make sure that the light is on and that you're taking what God has given us. I, t I take everything he's given us that pertains to life and godliness. Everything that we need, we already have. Everything that we need. The work was done at the cross. Not like just take only the salvation or the healing, but take your joy, take your peace, take your courage, take your tenacity, take endurance. Be empowered with everything that Jesus died on the cross for and believe in the finished work of the cross. The finished work of the cross. Jesus said, it is finished. Everything that you need, I died for. I hung there. I died for your hangups. I died for your I can't help it. I died for your hopelessness. I died for everything. I died for your addictions. I died for your troubles. I died for your sickness. Now take it and believe it and apply it and walk in your freedom. Be free in Jesus' name. Be free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I pray that the church of Jesus Christ in this hour understand that we don't have to beg for our healing. We can, we, we can travail and we can hold on to the faith that was once delivered. But it's already been done. Everything that we need pertaining to life and godliness, he's given it to us. And then he adds to that. That if you're frail as a human, as he knows that we are, and, and we can't do certain things out of our own uh, uh, humanity, and, and just one example, just in case, I don't have enough love for you because you got on my last nerve. <laughs> we are partakers of his divine nature, and he has all the love that I need. Come on, somebody. He has all the love that I need just in case my joy runs out. There's an exceeding great abundant more joy that I can tap into. Just in case I get depleted within my own self, there's another source I can go to. We have his nature. I have his wisdom. I have his nature. I'm smart. I'm smarter than many others, and so are you. 
because we have his divine nature. This is the precious faith that he left for us to live, not only a natural life, but a supernatural life. Come on, somebody. Come on, go, go with me. We live in another zone. We can know what nobody else knows. We can, we can say what nobody else can say because we have eyes beyond this natural world. We have a faith beyond this natural world. We have an understanding beyond this natural world. And when we open our eyes to see what God sees, and when we open our mouth to say what God says, and when we open our arms to receive what God has given us, it, be, be, it causes us to be more than mortal men. I hope I'm talking to somebody right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're somebody. You're somebody. You're spirit being and you're a human being. There's always a duality uh, uh, thing going on with the spirit. He, we, we talk about seed time and harvest. We talk about, you know, he sends us to, to pluck up and then to plant. And, 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 and what he does in the natural, he does in the spirit. So he's always working as we're building out here. As we're tearing down the old foundation. We're erecting a new foundation. So it is in our spirit life. As we're tearing down an old foundation, we're erecting up a new foundation within our lives. So we are growing from glory to glory to glory to glory. We are expanding uh, First Chronicles 4 and 10, the prayer of Jabez, extend our boundaries, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Not only is he blessing us in the natural, but while we're sowing in the, in the natural, while we're building out here, he's building in here. He's building our families. There's a dual work going on right now. You're seeing something that you're seeing with your natural eye, but he's doing something that you cannot see in your spiritual house. He's building a natural house. He's building a spiritual house. You're sowing into a natural house. You're sowing into a spiritual house. And as you take care of God's business, he will surely take care of your business. <laughs> Hallelujah. As you give unto the Lord, certainly he gives back to you and more and more and more and more. I heard somebody said the other day, uh, it was a pastor, and he was saying, one man that was giving his tithes and offering, he says, you know what, I just sow and sow and sow and sow and sow, and I'm sick of this because I don't see the return. And much as I sow, much as I sow, I got a problem with that. And I just want to know, pastor, why don't I see my harvest? Why can't I see? I've been faithful. And I'm telling you, I sold more than I sold last year. And I'm just throwing so much. And the pastor said, well, where are you getting the money from? <laughs> where are you getting the money from if you're doing all this sowing? <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, how can you keep sowing and sowing and sowing? I mean, he's just talking about how big of a sower he is. Well, guess who gave you that money, son? Great big God, because as you sow, it's a law. You must reap. And then God says, today, multiply unto you. Multiply. Receive that in Jesus' name. He breathes on this salutation to you. And he didn't say, uh, you know, I'll add uh, mercy and grace to you. He said, I'll multiply. Somebody, somebody need to receive that. I received the multiplication anointing today in my life in Jesus' name. And so the, the, the Apostle Paul says again, um, the fourth chapter, the first verse in the book of Galatians, after Peter told us about this precious faith that we have and that God has given us uh, this faith and then he's given us his nature. I can be like him because he put that in me. Well, Paul says that we can be sure to know that you can be um, disengaged from your old man. Now I say that the heir, of, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage in bondage under the elements of this world, a slave to the elements of this world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoptions of sons. So no, now we are no more a slave because we've been adopted into this royal family. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, 
Abba, Father. Therefore, everybody say therefore. Therefore. <laughs> therefore, you are no longer a slave, but what? But a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. We have these precious promises. You're not a son. You're not enslaved to the old ways and the rudiments and the elements of this world. Your master is no longer Satan, but your heavenly father. You are bond slave, as the apostle said, of Jesus Christ. So we belong to him. We have been adopted in the royal family. We have precious life faith. And we are an heir of salvation, but we also have the nature of God. How, somebody said this a long time ago, how can we lose with the stuff we use? How can we lose with God's ability on the inside of us? Where is the limit, people? Where is the limit? Where is the limit? There is no limit. Because in Christ Jesus, there's a fullness of everything. We're living in the day of, of the Feast of Weeks. This, this, is, this is not Passover. This is the tabernacle. This is the fullness. This is Pentecost. This is the fullness. And so these are the last of the last days. And if God said it, it's about time for it to come to pass now. If God spoke it, it's about time for it to be manifested now. And, and I'm saying to you that with this like precious faith, do not lay it, allow it to lay dormant in your life, in your family, in your business, but use this like precious faith that caused them to be victors in the Old Testament, the New Testament, and even us in the Now Testament. That's who I am, people. That's who you are. Make no apology for it. That's who you are. You're powerful. You're not only wonderfully made in the image of God, but you have his power. You have his nature. There is nothing that you cannot do. Listen to me. There is nothing that you cannot do. I read a scripture from Genesis, the 11th chapter, uh, uh, this morning earlier, and it was about the Tower of Babel. You remember that when the Bible said that the people at one time in the earth, imagine this, Everybody in the earth had one language, was one nation, until they began to, to rebel and wanted, want to do their own thing. God set it up, but, but they wanted to do their own thing, and they began to uh, build a tower up to heaven so they could be in one place when the Lord gave them the direction to, to be scattered. But they wanted to do their own thing. But here's the thing. They were able to do their own thing because of laws and principles that God set up. Because of laws and principles in the earth, in the earth that God set up. And these were, this was a heathen nation because they were under Nimrod. And so what they did, the Bible said, they were one. They were one. They were one. They all had the same goal. They all spoke the same language. They all agreed on the same thing when it came time to getting the work done. And because they were all one, they were able to do what God said, whatever they imagined. Powerful people. God has given us a platform to use called our imagination. And, and, and because we have his nature, because it's more than what we know, but we can tap into what we don't know and begin to utilize it in the earth. As it is in heaven, so shall it be in the earth through me. Because I can pull on his wisdom. I can pull on whatever knowledge that I, I need. I, I, can, I can know what others don't know. That's true. That's who you are. Amen. You can figure out stuff that nobody else can't figure out. And they say, how'd you know that? And just, you know, you'd be taking the credit yourself, I know. But the real deal is, you know you got it from God and the Holy Spirit revealed it to you. You know you're not that smart. You know that it's not your, how, how much of a genius you are. But you tapped into some spiritual properties, not just your intellectual properties. You tapped into God's power, and you got what you needed. And so they gave you a raise, and you ought to give more money to God because they gave you a raise because you used his, yes, yeah, what I said. Put your hands together and say, that's the truth, that's the truth, that's the truth. 
I'm trying to tell you who you are. I'm trying to, to let you know that there's so much greatness on the inside of you. I'm trying to say to you that you're doing a great thing in the kingdom, but there's a, also a great work that's happening in you. I'm trying to let you know that you're not tied to um, this level that you've been in, but even as you are advancing and as you are expanding and as you are elevating out in the natural, so it's happening in your, in your spiritual life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Except God builds the city. Those that build it, the watchmen, they labor in vain. Except God builds us as a spiritual house. I came to tell you, Harvest Time, your spiritual house is enlarging. Your spiritual house, not just your natural house, but your spiritual house, your children, your grandchildren, things are happening. And you may see the formation of it, and you may see a little bit of it, and you may see the ugly part of it, and you may see the, 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 the danger that could be, but you got to know that God has started a work in your family, and he will complete it, and you will see the finished job of it. It doesn't matter what your children are doing right now. It it ain't over till God says it's over. And he's not finished with them because the truth of the matter, he's not finished with us. And so there's a spiritual work that's happening right now in this house. There's a building of, of, of your most holy faith. There's an empowering. Make room for the more of God. Yes, enlarge your capacity because God is pouring even more revelation. I mean, you, 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 I told you there's duality in the spirit, in the work of the spirit. And you didn't just drop your Bibles and close your Bibles and just, you know, put all of your focus out there. No. No. As it, is, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. Something is happening in your life all because of your faithfulness, all because of the assignment that's on this house, all because we're in this local house, and God has given us a task. And as we are faithful to him, he's faithful to us. Hallelujah. Every dime that you put is counting for his glory. Every dollar, every hundreds of dollars, every sacrifice you do, you're building not only a natural house, but at the same time you're building up your most holy faith. You're building up your, 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 your spiritual house. You're sowing, you're sowing, because there's always a double work that he's doing in the earth when he's moving by his spirit. I got to tell you, uh, Pastor, that even this morning when I said that um, this house is key to your future, it's key to the future of this region, the, 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 the presence of God, the covering that this house gives this region, the covering that this house gives the, the people that don't go to church, but their children are blessed because you're here praying for their children. The covering the, that this house gives to maybe the parents don't come to the Bible class or to the Sunday school, but the children do. And that like precious faith going into this community, into, this, into the children, expanding the kingdom of God all because of you here in this house, understanding and applying what God has given you. Hallelujah. And he's given it to us through his knowledge. This is a time to live not by your feelings, not by your impressions, but to live by the word of the Lord. To be as solid as a rock. To be as stable as a rock. To have your eyes fixed on the author and the finisher of your faith. To keep your eyes put on what you can't see, but you know what he said. It's the time to believe God as never before. And right before your very eyes, right before your very eyes, you'll see the manifestation of it. One by one, name by name. And at the same time, he's building his house and he's building his spiritual house. He's building the kingdom. It's all in the kingdom. So, Pastor, this morning I looked at my notes 
from yesterday, and the Lord said that, that as you are building the new building, the clouds are gathering. I showed you, I said, this was in my notes. He's talking about the clouds. He's going to take it to the bank. Take it to the bank. <laughs> the clouds, pastor, are gathering. You are, as you are building and expanding, God said that the clouds are gathering from all over. And there shall be not just showers, but there shall be such an abundance of rain. Again, what he does in the natural, he does in the spirit, people. The clouds are gathering. And as you build, as you go forth and expand, you're gathering. You're, you're, this is a church that gathers. But, but not only in the natural, not only would there be increase in the numbers, but there will be increase in the clouds gathering. Hallelujah. And so as you understand that God is doing a new work, everybody say new work. New work. Amen. Say new work. It's a new work, and with a new work, there comes a new day. There comes new instructions, doesn't it? It, it you know, it comes, it, it, it brings us to a new level. We move to a new level, and we don't go backwards. We get better and better and better and better, and we, get, we increase and we increase and we increase. So we're in the process of a new work, a new day. And so that's why it's necessary to dig and to dig up stuff that shouldn't be there in the foundation. That's why it's important to begin to excavate. It's, it's important to make the, the, uh, the foundation real solid. There may be some things you got to do to make this foundation even firmer than before. It's a greater work, and it calls for a greater foundation in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so when you understand what he's doing in the natural, please, ma'am, please, sir, understand what he's doing in the spirit realm. Understand what he's doing in your life. There's some things during this process he's going to pluck out of your life. That's what I said, and that's what I meant. Uh -uh. He's going to pluck out of your life. He's going to root up some things that needed to be rooted up so that you can have your new house, your spiritual new house. He's going to build on a new foundation so that you can begin to be that person that God called you to be. He said that, he would, that we could build from on one foundation to another foundation and, be, and keep moving as we grow. And as we know, amen. Am I talking to anybody in the house? Yes. Precious like faith that he's given us. That we are no longer tied to the world or to an old Adamic nature. I can let go of Judy and I can put on him. The apostle Paul said, you know, I must decrease. And that meant his old Adamic nature so that he could increase. That I got to pull off me. So that my spiritual house can be fit for the master's use. God's doing some great things in this house. You see it in the natural, but I've come to tell you he's doing some great things in your spiritual house. You're being empowered. You're being fortified. You're being strengthened. You're making room for more. There's capacity building here. He's enlarging your territory. He's causing you to pick up the stakes and stretch them and put them over there. And, and, and somebody needs to take this to the bank, too, that it's not only your earthly house or this house, but some of you are in the, in the process and needing a new physical house. And if you, with the same like precious faith, if you would... If you can believe, it's yours too. If you can believe, if you can imagine, if you can think, that's for me. God loves you. The glory loves you. God loves you. His promises loves you. His promises can't wait to get to you. He's not, he said, Abba, Father, call me. He's not saying stay away from me. He's not like the unjust judge, push her away. He's saying, I, you can call me, Father, and I'll come. You can come close. And so in these last days, he wants the church of Jesus Christ to wake up and to understand you have this like precious faith. Use it. Value it. Use it. Understanding that this is the word of the Lord and this is the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That he gives to us so that we can live not only a godly life, not only a righteous life, not only a holy life, but a victorious life. Yes. That's who we are. Yes. So when we renew our mind to his word, what his word says, what his word says, not what it looks like, what his word says, what he promised. 
But he promised. I remember, uh, I don't know if I said this before, but I remember uh, maybe five years ago when I was living in a, 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 a comfortable home, you know, three-story on a golf course and everything. And, and it wasn't large enough. It was large enough, for, it was large enough for me, but it wasn't large enough for me and the saints. Yeah, I know I'm a pastor. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. I needed a bigger house because I had so many people coming over all the time. <laughs> And so my realtor called one day and she said, I'm standing in your kitchen. I said, no, you're not. I'm standing in my kitchen. She said, no, I'm talking about your new house. I said, I am not looking for a new house. I'd never live above my means. And in the right time, when I can see my way, I will get a new house. But I'm not looking for a new house. And she said, uh, Judy Shaw, I am in your house. I know that this is your house. I am not, I'm not a pastor like you. And I may not believe like you. I'm Lutheran. But I'm telling you, this is your house. She told me this. I said, well, um, she said, just come and see. I said, I'm not in the market. She says, this is your house. I'm telling you. I had to open up my mind. I had to do something different that I normally don't do. Instead of trusting me, I trust somebody that wasn't like a believer like I was, you know, <laughs> kind of like. So I thought. <laughs> and uh, I, she said, just stop by. I said, well, I'm on my way to church, and I will stop by. And stop by the house, and I was like, oh, okay. She said, this is your house. I said, but I'm not looking. She said, but just come and look. I went in there and looked, and I said, Nice, 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 real nice. I said, but way above my means. I said, but you know what? I like it enough one day to knock on these doors in a couple of years and say, do you want to sell? Because I want to buy. That's just me. That's how I do it. And so I said, so I, I, I see what I want. I said, I could do this. I like this. I love this. And so my last statement to her was, but I'm not ready for it yet. Pastor Denise, when I said that, the Holy Ghost spoke to my spirit and said, but it's my time for you. I told her it was not my time. But the Holy Spirit said to me, I couldn't deny it, but it's my time. It's so much. I said, oh, I said, Marcy, get a contract. Didn't know how it was going to happen. I just know that I heard what I heard, and my like, precious faith chimed in on it. And I said, if I heard what God said, see, all I, need, all I need to do is hear it. I don't have to all understand it. I just need to hear it. I mean, I can figure it out, but I just need to hear it. And if I, if I, know, if I can discern it's the voice of God, it's not my own self. If I can discern it's God's voice, it's a done deal, baby. Because I'm stepping on God's words, and I'll watch and see how he unfolds this thing. Pastor, I believe that's what you and Harvest Time have done. You stepped on his word, and you're, you're, you're watching to see how it unfolds. And you know that you know that you know that it's going to be all right at the end. Amen. Every dime will be there at every junction, God, because of your like precious faith. Because you are believing what God says. You are trusting in it. You're hoping it. You are expecting God at every time, at every place. If he speaks to you, you know that you're going to do it because he's going to do it. If he says give sacrificially, you're going to do it because you know if you give it, he's going to give back to you. I say all the time, the more you give, the more you receive because you need to give more the next time. And he'll just keep giving, 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 giving. Anybody witness to that? Anybody a witness? If you're not a witness, it's a joy. It's a joy. It's a joy to watch the increase of offerings. And I was like, wow, God, I'm up there now. All right now. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Without, without, without sorrow. He make it rich and adds no sorrow. But this is what I'm saying to you, that there's, God is doing something. He's not going to leave you stranded. You're not going to be barely making it. It's going to be so tight we can't even buy another donut. He's not going to do that. He maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow. And he brings increase on top of increase, on top of increase, on top of increase. And he'll provide every step of the way. And when I moved from one place, long story short, when God said it was my time, I did all I could do. Basically, I went through door number one, door number two, door number three, door number four, door number five. I went through every financial door. I went through everything that I could do. And I said, Phew. Okay, God, there's nothing else I can do. Your turn. Your turn. And just like he said, before the year is out, 
somebody reminded me. So you got a prophecy from, we had a, we had a meeting and Dave Wagner was there. You got a prophecy from Dave Wagner. Remember I said, oh yeah, one of those prophecies. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I said, oh yeah, okay, let me go pull that back up and, and let me listen to that. And the prophecy said, Judy Shaw, before the end of the year, you will have a new address. I want you to know it was December 29th when I read that prophecy. I want you to know that December 30th, I had the house. Because with my life precious faith, I stepped out and I said, all right, this is the last deal. I called the man up, I just went over my realtor. She was in California I, and I had time to wait for her. And I just called him up myself and I said, we need to talk, meet me at Starbucks. I got the deal ready for you. It's gonna be a win-win situation and um, it's gonna be done. And I called him up and just like the Lord said, it was a win-win situation and didn't know how it was gonna happen. But I will tell you this, the check was written for the full amount and it didn't come out of my bank account. Come on somebody. <laughs> All because, all because I dared to use my like precious faith. When you understand, it's the same faith. It's the same faith that got all those miracles. We preach about the miracles. You talk about the miracles. You sing about the miracles. You play about the miracles. You prophesy about the miracles. You preach about the miracles. But all because we begin to use that same like precious faith, we begin to see the manifestation of miracles. I speak to you today in the name of Jesus. And as faith is taking root in your heart and there's an increase of faith in your heart, Take it, receive it. You've already have it. Just walk it out. S -s -s dare to step where you've never stepped before. Dare to give where you've never given before. Dare to receive what you've been holding back on. Receive this anointing today. Just lift up your hands right now. Come on, lift up your hands if you wish, if you desire. As a point of contact, maybe a little difficult for some, but. If you want this understanding even in a greater way, I'm saying to you, as a born-again believer, you already have this like precious faith. I stir it up in Jesus' name for the glory of God. Father, I thank you for increase. I thank you for a new measure. I thank you for your word, God, being established even in a greater way in this house. I thank you for greater productivity. Father, I thank you that this house will begin to create what they need, that they will be a create, God. It will not be an old pattern. It will not be an old system. But Father, I thank you that they've stepped on board and say, we're not going by the old plans anymore, that there's it's a new day and there's new plans and we're going to see new streams of avenue of, 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 of revenue coming in. We're going to see something new. I want to say pray even right now, God, that they would open their mind to new, to new, to new, to new, to new. And they would close the book on the old. Close the book on the old. Close the book on the old. And Father, we thank you for new patterns. We thank you for new constructs. We thank you for new, God, uh, stratagems. We thank you, God, for new conclaves. We thank you, God, for what you're getting ready to reveal because of our like precious faith. We've known you in one round before, and you've done well, and we've received from that realm. But, Father, I just release and say today that this new, this precious like faith, God, this like precious faith have caused us to see even greater, caused us to stretch out and to uh, dare to do what seemed like it could not be done. Father, I thank you for that walking out on the water anointing. I thank you, God, for that calling those things to be so as if they were not. I thank you, God, for the man, the woman that's going to make the step of faith when they leave here and say, yes, I have that like precious faith and I'm going to use it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for seeds of righteousness, but I thank you for the seeds of faith that's been planted into good ground today. And so shall it be. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Father, I bless you and I praise you for this word 
that have come to bring life to us. Some have given up on their dreams. Some have given up and said, God, it just doesn't seem like you're going to do it. I, I just want to just stop and maybe just, just forget about it. Father, let them get the Holy Ghost shovel out today and dig up those dreams again. Let them get the Holy Ghost shovel, God, and begin to excavate and begin to tear out, root out the doubt and root out the unbelief so that you can just prove yourself and show yourself to be great and mighty God in their lives in this last day. Father, I thank you for blessings. I thank you for increase. I thank you for the abundance, God. Thank you for this house that walks in a new day. Thank you for the revealing of new things. Everybody say new, 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 new. When the New Testament came, it says not according to the old pattern, not according to the way that we got what we got before, but there's going to be a new way. And Father, I thank you that that revelation and those instructions, and I thank you that you're releasing those even as we go on taking step by step. Even as you told Abraham, you don't know where you're going, but just follow the yellow brick road. Just follow me all the way down to whatever I say stop, you stop. When I say go again, you go. God, I thank you, even if the plans and even if the strategies are, are, are day by day or month by month, I thank you that, that, that this church is receiving the new, receiving the new, receiving the new. Open up your mouth, open up your spiritual womb and receive the new, said the Lord. Receive the new, the new, the new. The old will leave something out. The old is good, but there's more to be added to make it new. If you go by the old, you miss, you miss the timing, you miss the direction. But Father, I thank you that our eyes are open and our ears are open for the new, for the new. And we bless you and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. If you've been blessed by this message and if you're one to say that I feel that my waters have been stirred, the gift of God has been stirred up into me, I, whew, I, feel, I feel like I can do it. I just want you to stand up by your, on your feet and say, I'm, I'm taking it. I'm walking out. If that's you, yeah, I'm taking it. I'm going to pray a grace over you. I'm taking it. I'm walking out to a new day in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Lord. And Father, I thank you for every soul that stood, that's standing in a new place of faith. Father, I thank you for every one that says, I'm ready to receive the new, that hears this voice and this word and believes it. I release them to their new day. I release them to new ways. I release them to see something more than what they've seen before. I pronounce this day as the day of stepping into a new realm of glory, a new realm of understanding, a new realm of truth, a new realm of stepping out. Father, I decree and declare that there will be a Holy Ghost rush and a wind that will push them into their next that will push them into their necks. Somebody's been stuck, Lord. Let the wind of God push them into their necks. Let the word of God rush them into their necks. Their eyes will be open naturally and spiritually, and they'll say, I heard that word today. I didn't quite understand all of it, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to prove God. I'm going to test that word. I dare you today, ma'ams and sirs, test God's words. Trust God's words. Try God's words and let him prove his word as you step out in it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I do. I see that green light again. I see that green light again. I see it over somebody right here. Green light. That means go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Right over here in Jesus' name. I see a green light in the back. I'm serious. I see a green light. A green light. That means you have the ability of God. You have the grace of God. Just step out in your light, precious faith and watch God begin to do exactly what he said to do in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you for the signs and wonders that shall follow this service. We thank you for the testimonies that shall come out of this word as you've established your word into our hearts today. And we value our light, precious faith. It's brought us here thus far. But now you want to take us to a new place, Lord, a greater place. And we say, yes, Lord. We say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Open the eyes of our heart, Lord. Open the eyes of our hearts. We want to see you like we've never seen you before. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you.